I am glad to be here and be able to minister this sermon. If you'll turn with me to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, starting with verse 1. When you get there, say, Amen. Amen. What an exciting time to be alive yeah. and to be saved. Mm -hmm. That song is really sad that many people are asleep and have no room for Jesus. Wow. And I believe America has been lulled to sleep and uh, is in the same predicament. You there? Yeah. Okay. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. If you'll bow your head, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We ask that you have place in our hearts. Help us to open up our hearts, dear Lord, that you can move, Lord Jesus, and show us certain things about this word. Lord, help us to be wise, Lord Jesus, and seek you out to seek you out in all things pertaining to life and godliness, Lord. Help us not turn to the left or to the right, but ever keep your word before our lives. Lord, we need your Shekinah glory. I just pray that your glory show up in here this morning. Help me to decrease and you increase and let the word come forth. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. Now we see in this text that they were men, wise men, who sought to worship Jesus. The name of this sermon is called True Seekers. True Seekers. True Seekers seek to worship Jesus. Now I want you to think about this. They don't come to church to show off their fancy outfits or to be involved in a social club or to sow a seed to meet a need or to look for a positive message, something I can apply to my life. No, they come actually to worship Jesus. Amen. If we came to church and we came to the Lord like that to worship Him, all those other things would take care of themselves. Right. Blessed are those who hunger and seek for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Many people come for a, a self-help sermon. They come for a positive word. They come, matter of fact, for a social club to see what Cousin Susie's doing or, or Bob over there or how they're, what they're driving, what they're wearing and all this. But we forget we come to worship Jesus. They, weren't, they were not called wise because of who they was. They were called wise because of what they were seeking to do. Amen? Amen. Worship is a devotion. A devotion to the King of Kings. Yes, it is. And, and we recognize God for who He is, is what worship is. Praise is recognizing and praising God for what He has done. Mm -hmm. Worship is recognizing God for who He is, according to His Word. And they came to worship Jesus. Praise God. Now, when you come in your life to the Lord to worship Him, not to try to manipulate Him, not trying to do this or that to get something from Him, but just to worship Him, guess what happens? You're going to be given a bad name. There will be people call you up the devil and everything else. That's what happened also to the wise men, those truth seekers. They were called all through the ages, and even today there are some cults and, and people that call the wise men pagans and say that they were of uh, astrology and that they were in witchcraft and all that. But actually astrology is something totally different than astronomy. <coughs> and the wise men, what they did, they were actually astronomers. They actually studied the laws of physics and mathematics to check and see the signs, like forecasting weather. There's nothing wrong with that. Astrology, however, when you're trying to look at the, the configuration of the solar system to predict somebody's fate, by their birthday, like horoscopes, that is witchcraft. That's divination. So there's two different things. The wise men have been given a bad name all these years because of this right here. I Many say they're the magi. and said that they tried to work magic. But that's not what they were called the magi. We find that out, and we realize that they were wise, and they also came to seek to worship Jesus. Now, you're not going to catch somebody who's in paganism desire to worship Jesus. Amen. Amen. We see that. Let me keep on going, praise God. Because we also see that they've seen the star. Now they've seen this star from afar off. And they got a glimpse of the glory of God. But that wasn't good enough. How many of you have been saved? 
and you've had that experience, and you've had a glimpse of the glory, like they seen the star from afar off, but something inspired them to cross thousands of miles to actually come and worship Jesus. There's a difference in people that get touched and saved by grace through faith and those who seek to know Him. Amen? Amen. There, there's more to it than just a glimpse of the glory. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You also continue to go from precept to precept, from line upon line. You just don't sit in the pew and stop and become complacent. And there's more to Christ than just a glimpse. There's the glory. And that's what they come seeking. They seen that star, but they wanted to see the glory of the Lord. How many in here want to see the glory of the Lord? Or do you just want to sit in the pew and say, I'm saved. It's great to be saved. But look, a lot of people just want that get out of hell free card. I got some up underneath here, man, and I can handle mine, but that's not going to do you much good. Because it's those who endure unto the end that shall be saved. Amen. And we're going to go through a dark hour. Gross darkness will cover the earth, it says in Isaiah 6. 6 1. Gross darkness will cover the people. And it's getting dark. And you can't see a star while the sun's out. So they had to seek while it was dark. <laughs> to see that bright star. You know, we need to start being like the wise men. And as things are getting darker, instead of falling away from the church, instead of falling back, we need to be like the wise men and start seeking like never before. Amen. Yeah. We need to grab hold of a passion inside of our heart to see the glory of God and start digging in. Now these men had to dig earnestly because they were from pagan lands. But just because they were from pagan lands doesn't mean that they were entrenched in paganism. Amen? Amen? They had to dig so far that they had to find the Torah. They had to find the ancient scrolls that was not in their country. You see, Jerusalem had the temple. And they had the Pharisees, Sadducees, and all these priests to pull out the Torah and the book of Isaiah and teach the people. But these men didn't have all that. So they had to seek even harder to find the scrolls from ancient Babylon when Daniel was there. And Daniel left all this information. And they found this. They found the prophecy that God had laid down Himself in Genesis chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. I'll read that to you. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, animosity, between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It, who is Christ, shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That's what they were seeking. They were seeking the Messiah. For thousands of years, people had sought the Messiah. And they were seeking Messiah. They were seeking the fulfillment of this prophecy. 